into the horizon where lies my passion what feeds my soul question my hey now all welcome to the spirit sherpa after party this is where kelly and her guests share a little bit more than what you've heard on a spirit sherpa episode this month kelly shares the story of her pilgrim passport with us not sure what that means neither was i let's listen in and see behind pieces of myself Worn out, torn up and sitting. Hey, Joey, have you ever seen this? I haven't. What is it? So this is the Pilgrim's Passport that was given to me by one of the people I stayed with when I went on walkabout. Like Mayflower Pilgrims or? <laughs> <laughs> no, like like a walkabout. So well, walkabout is a spiritual pilgrimage, right? right? So it's yeah. a Pilgrim's Passport. If you were to um, walk the Camino de Santiago in Spain, you are given a piece of paper that is your pilgrim's passport and every place you stop along the journey has a little stamp oh. to, to mark that you were there. And so uh, he, he knew this and I, I had no idea at the time, but he knew this. And so he bought this or had this, I don't know if he bought it for me or not, but it was a little book made by monks and the oh. book became my pilgrim's passport and he he made the first entry and he had a stamp ready to go and stamped it for me and so every place i stopped along the journey i asked the people that i stayed with to write something in my passport and some people had like a stamp like a postage stamp and some mm -hmm. people had actual stamps and somebody had somebody did a wax imprint and somebody else made a little piece of seed bead jewelry and glued it in and somebody else made a potato stamp you know we had all <laughs> kinds of stuff because people were totally unprepared for this request right and so we just had to make do with what what was in existence at the time and but now it's like one of my most treasured items because it's you know messages from those people to me about the stay and so i wanted to share it with you so that you could could see it but i've also decided as part of our bonus content is that i've taken pictures of every single page and i'm going to upload them onto a web page that will then be available and you guys can click and and read each of the pages and and see what it says and things like that that'll give you a chance to sort of have the same experience as me as good looking back and seeing what that's about if you're curious who these people are and where they were along the journey i've also got the live journal that i kept at the time which mm -hmm is not on live journal anymore because you know who knows how long live journal is going to be around or even if it is anymore i don't know but it was the journaling site of the day back in 2002 and so while i was on the trip one of the things that happened at each time i stopped is people would say well keep me apprised let me know how it goes right yeah and that's a lot of people to keep up with when you're driving and you only have limited amounts of minutes on your cell phone because you're living on 350 dollars a month in the kindness of strangers and so what would happen is every few days I would find a library mm -hmm. or find somebody's house that had an internet connection and upload the stories of the last few days. Sometimes I would write them down in, in a book and then I would just transcribe them and other times I would just type out what had happened yeah. uh, depending on how much time I had. But it was, you know, it's pretty pre-smartphone because 2002 right. there was no internet connection unless yeah. you went to the library or had somebody who had one so i kept a running journal of that and every time i would stop and they would say i want to keep up with you i'm like here's my live journal account and you can follow the journey from there and and you know it was interesting i was at an event last night or yesterday afternoon and one of the people said that they were trying to be cognizant of every time they would go and stay with someone that she would try and be cognizant of intending to bring positivity or you know goodness or something to the people who were putting her up mm -hmm. and she said did you do that on your journey and i was like no i didn't because walk about is specifically the process of surrendering and you cannot set intention and be in surrender at the same time uh, because you know intention is control right? right and so i just had faith that when i came to the person's house that it was the right person 
and the right house and that the energy I was bringing with me was the gift that they needed to receive. Hmm. And inevitably, the people I was staying with would be like, wow, I'm so grateful to be part of your journey. And wow, I really wish I could be on this journey with you or I or do my own journey or whatever. And they did just the circumstances of their lives did not allow for them to just like drop everything, give everything away and just go. So in each place that I stopped, there was this moment of bringing the energy of something that they found sacred. Mm-hmm. And for me, this book is a reflection of that connection and allowing them a way to follow the journey with me on my live journal was a way for them to be able to take part do in virtual what they couldn't do in physical and so the blog posts that are there now i've translated all of the blog posts from live journal to my current website kellysparta.com and if you go into the blog entry section and you go down to a modern day shaman's initiation that is the story of the walkabout from the very beginning all the way through for the almost year that I was on walkabout. It's a really interesting story. <laughs> I, I printed it out years ago for uh, my hairdresser and she she bitched at me the next time she saw me. She was like, I was up until one in the morning reading your story. <laughs> it's just like I couldn't put it down. I didn't get any sleep. <laughs> so so uh, it's definitely got its own entertainment. So Hopefully you will enjoy that and enjoy seeing the pictures on the website that are going to be posted in the link below this recording. And, you know, write back, let me know what you think. You know, there's ways for you to comment on these posts that we're doing for the uh, Patreon site. So I would love to hear your thoughts or you can comment directly on the blog itself if you want to do that at the different marks. Yeah. I just wanted to share a little bit about that journey since it was it was a very early part of my process and one of the things that that you know I don't think comes through as much now but was super present for me at the time you know one of the first entries in that is the list of my fears hmm. as I stepped down on the journey and so you know I think that would be really informative for people too well and I was going to ask you about that because when we look back on mementos about a trip that we took or something like that whether it's pictures or things that we wrote during that trip we're reminded and we're sort of in a way transported back to that that trip but we're transported back there as the person we are now so we're sort of it's it's reminiscing more than anything else but where you were in this case on such a a a transformative journey which was an intention it wasn't just a trip it wasn't a road trip this was more than that this was a, a a point in your life where you were changing anything does sort of looking back on these mementos also bring you back to the energetic of that that trip itself as well? I think reading the blog does more for that for me. The memento itself brings me back to the connection that I had with the person. Yeah. And and interestingly enough, because I still had my heart pretty armored up at the time that I was going through this Mm -hmm. process, I think I actually feel more now than I did at the time. The opening and closing credits of our podcast are a poem, a song that I actually wrote while I was on Walkabout about being on Walkabout. Yeah. And so, you know, it says each mile I travel over 13,000. Now the final tally was over 14,000 miles. So yeah. it was in the middle of the Walkabout. It was <laughs> during the Walkabout that that was written. And reading the blog entries again, reading those journal entries really brings me back. And one of the things that that I find most compelling from this vantage point, mm-hmm. and it's it's interesting to, to be looking back on it because during the journey, I was told by two different tarot readers that I would not know the full import of the journey for more than a decade. And here we are uh, almost two decades later. Yeah. And the thing that I notice looking back on it is that I was on walkabout. I didn't even know I was going to be on walkabout. It wasn't until I pulled into my first stop at five o'clock in the morning that I realized this isn't home. I thought I was moving. Yeah. I thought I was moving. And so I pulled in at five o'clock in the morning. I'm following this person home and I'm pulling into Bloomington, Indiana. And I pull into town and I'm like, oh, this isn't home. Oh, crap. I'm on walkabout. <laughs> I just was like, shit. I had no idea. Right. And so there was this moment of 
of, oh, crap, what did I get myself into, right? And it's like, oh, too late now, I'm there, right? There's that moment of, of realizing that I'm on walkabout and knowing what walkabout's supposed to be about, which is very interesting because only it was only like six months earlier that I had actually learned what walkabout was. I didn't have any idea. I'd never even heard of walkabout until about six months before that, where I heard about it from a woman who ran a store in town where I lived. And my shaman defined it for me as, you know, walking out into the world until you find yourself. And that was my definition of it. And I knew I was on walkabout. And even with that definition and the knowledge that I was on walkabout, I could not, as you read the entries, I could not allow myself to be doing it just for me. Mm -hmm. As you read through it, I'm always like opening a pilgrim's path and I'm leading the right way for other people. And yeah. I just, it had to be in service to other people or I wasn't allowed to do it. Right. And that was where I was at the time. Yeah. And, you know, the list that I made of my fears was the very first time I was ever fully transparent with people. And I was so scared when I made that post that I had turned off the comments. <laughs> I did not want anyone to be able to comment because I didn't want to know what they thought because it was, it was such a big thing for me to put out that I was afraid of anything because, you know, I was warrior woman. There's a reason my last name is Sparta. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when I got divorced, I took that last name and I chose that name for myself. And it's because I was very into my warrior self and a warrior never shows fear. Warrior never shows vulnerability. Ho, 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 right. Big warrior. Yeah. And I was so in that space and to, to write a list of my fears like that was, was such a seminal moment for me. It was so raw. I yeah. was so scared. I was, I was scared of admitting I was scared. You know? <laughs> it was, it was, I was more scared of admitting I was scared than I was of being scared itself. <laughs> it was one of those moments where I'm just like, okay, I'm going to hit publish now. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah, and then, and then run away. And, <laughs> and then run I away. Didn't get beat on, you know, and and that's why I turned off the comments because I just couldn't. I just couldn't. <laughs> this has been cool. I think this has given yeah. people another another cool insight into part of that walkabout journey, which we've talked about on Spirit Trip before, but certainly not in this type of detail, and certainly yeah. not with the story of the stories that you have shared out there. Speaking of those stories, you're going to share in the uh, section below this recording, you're going to share information about how they can see the images from the Pilgrim's Passport. But also, we you could share the link to your blog post, which you've said is on yeah. kellysparta.com, but it might be good to share that there as well for everybody. Yeah, to I'll, I'll link to the very first entry yeah. so you guys can read forward from there. Yeah, Awesome. Well, thank you for exposing a little bit of that vulnerability again, certainly from a very, very different place uh, yeah. from a life's journey perspective, but still very powerful and meaningful. So thank you for doing that. And thank you for, for creating this place for people to come and get more. Yeah, my pleasure. You know, it's, it's one of the things that's, that's so important to me is that I feel like when I was at the beginning of my journey, I would look at people who were further along and I would, I would look at them and go, Oh, I want to be where you are, but I don't think I can. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I, I, you know, you're just, it's so easy for you. You don't even know how hard it is for right. me. And I think it's really important for me to tell you it wasn't easy for me. And, and it, some days it still isn't easy for me. And, <laughs> and, you know, to, to make it more accessible, you know, to, to let you inside so you can see that it's, we're all human mm -hmm. and we all have angst and we all have upset and we all have Pema Chodron. Oh, I love <laughs> Pema Chodron. She did an audio recording and one of the things that she talks about is a concept known as Shenpa. And it's that moment where somebody triggers you and you go, <laughs> and you're like, <laughs> you know, and she tells her experience of experiencing Shenpa with someone else. And I'm, I was like, Oh, Pema, I love you. <laughs> I love that you you have have opened up and shared that that's that's still happens for you because it it does it just happens right. every now and again you you run up against somebody that just makes you go you know <laughs> tweaks you a and, little bit. Uh, 
you know, it's, it's important to recognize that, that no matter whether it's me or somebody else uh, that you're looking up to, that you're, you're listening to, uh, you know, everybody is human Mm -hmm. and, you know, no matter how polished they may look, no matter how perfect their lives may appear, I promise you they're not. (laughs) Cool. Well, thank you very much. And that's all we have for this one. Hey guys, thank you so much for being part of the support structure here and for being a Patreon subscriber. I hope you've really enjoyed this bonus content and we're really looking forward to bringing you more. Thank you again. Have a great one. Pieces of myself Worn out, torn up And sitting on the shelf Of self-definition I'm driving